The music is wonderful. I could spend several hours listening to one track of it, and I'd still be in the mood to listen to it more. The story is well done. Every character who has a palace or goes through an awakening is different than the last before them. This game is definitely some of the best work Atlas has done in the past, and it's a fitting return to a series that has since been put on more or less a hiatus since the fourth installment, and a beautiful celebration to its 20th anniversary. I made the video back in 2019 before I enlisted a majority of the videos on there because YouTube wouldn't shut the fuck up in my emails. Now that the honeymoon phase is over, I want to have an actual talk about things I like, don't like, and call out a number of you making everyone else's lives that much harder. <sighs> Just to throw this out there, I've been more or less a lover of Persona since 2016 or so, after I have failed attempts to emulate 1 and 2, but a successful attempt with 3. The series drew me in and I personally loved it. And personally, flaws and all, I still love Persona. It still holds a special place in my heart. But as time went on, I eventually talked less about it. And you can thank my interactions with a number of people out of the vocal minority of fans that are, let's say, cultishly obnoxious. I don't like talking about something when the people discussing it online constantly are broken fucking records. The same jokes around the P3 Pro tag saying nobody liked the answer, the jokes from the Comic Dev for 4 wanting 3, 4, and 5 to be ported to newer consoles while ignoring 1 and 2, Persona 5 Royal is canon, Yoshizawa is the canon love interest, Strikers doesn't exist. I'm sick and fucking tired of this. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention the shit with people who got fetishes around stench and actual shit. And the uncomfortable pocket of people that fetishize romancing children and having a little sister. The anime kind and see nothing wrong with it because it's fiction. Now, I like to believe that I am a patient human being. I like to believe I'm nice enough to not step on anyone's shoes and let people enjoy whatever they want. But when people do not understand how to eventually shut the fuck up and go enjoy something else, because there's a fuck ton of media out there for people to enjoy, yeah, after about two to three years of dealing with this, I'm going to end something. Something's life ends with me. And honestly, I really started to notice this happening much more and more as soon as Persona 5, and by extension Royal, became such widely beloved favorites in the fandom, mainly because I believe in my heart that most people who talk about it non-stop to this day haven't played anything else. I'd argue they've watched someone else play the new story, skipped to their favorite parts, and now bought it with the rest. Or even that they just read the wiki. And I can bet when 6 comes out, either people will drop 5 saying 6 is the best game ever, ignore it because it's different than 5, or hate it because it's different and go off saying something like Persona 5 cannot be topped. So you know what? Nah, fuck it. I'm not being silent on this anymore. I'm gonna criticize Persona 5, Royal and Scramble, the Phantom Strikers. And yeah, this is gonna be pretty blunt at certain points because I'm getting fucking sick of this dead fucking horse being beaten. Now, for Persona 5 Vanilla, as it's been referred to, I think it is a good game. You play as a kid with a criminal record after saving a woman from being raped, and the whole game is about a set of outcasts standing against what society considered the norm, and chaining it for the better, dealing with adults that control and manipulate everyone under them, and helping those in need. Although, well, I like the idea of bringing back the Shadow Self aspect from 4 and playing more with it in a different way, I do kind of feel that, aside from Futaba for obvious reasons, and I'll even go so far as to say Sai as well, the Shadow Selves lack the deception of the real-life counterparts. I get this is supposed to be more of a repressed side of oneself and all, but do they really have to be mustache twirling James Bond-style villains? I don't know, I honestly feel like if the Shadow Self still had the deceptive part of the real-world counterparts that you could see being used to manipulate and gaslight others into doing what they want in the game, it'd be interesting to see. Or at least more of the unhinged side towards the real-world self instead of leaving it all for the Shadow. They did that to Madarami in the manga for a little bit, at least. I just want some more complexity with the villains, alright? At least, more than what they gave. Well, I like a number of the characters fine, as well as their arcanas, such as Sojiro's where we learn more about Futaba and hear about what he thinks is her adopted father, or Iwai in his past as well as his son. All things considered, I think 5 with social links feels... unnecessary to me. With the life sim aspects, the dating sim aspects, the dungeon that is basically just Tartarus from 3 but upside down, and the individual palaces which are somewhat similar to 4's, but more detailed in design like actual buildings to infiltrate, and a bunch of other stuff I didn't even bother to mention. The social links in this feels like it's doing too much for a game that has relatively so little time. And I wouldn't have much of a problem with it, if the game didn't stop to inform you that there are other arcanas whenever it can. 
which kind of feels like to me it goes against the whole take your time aspect the game likes to encourage. But most of the time it's left me feeling anxious trying to get every arcana maxed out because this is just how I decided to spend my time. I don't know, maybe the perks for every confidant you can rank up adds on to that whole doing too much aspect. Being that some like Tornosuke or Oya's perks feel unnecessary when the game encourages stealth just fine and the negotiations get turned into a game of roll the dice. I also kind of see why they scrapped the concept of social links being reversed or broken in this. Like don't get me wrong, it's nice to see a lot of these perks and characters are at least available to rank up and achieve in the game. I just kind of wish personally that it felt more encouraging to explore and wonder Shibuya to find them, because I've played this game several times and I personally did not find it fun getting everything available to do pointed out to me instead of letting me explore and rewarding me for doing so. Along with the arcanas like I mentioned before, the dating sim aspects, which I honestly think they suck. Uh, aside from the fact that this game lets you date an alcoholic woman, a fortune teller in an area where minors aren't allowed, a doctor who uses you for experiments, your own teacher, and kids in royal. Which for the sake of everyone who's normal, I really hope your response to all this is that Joker just sees them like siblings and he wants to spend time with them like family. I will actually block you if otherwise. I'm not fucking joking. Try me, bitch. Aside from all that, the dating sim aspects to me feel less like characters dating one another and more just a number of favors you do for them and near the end, that gives you enough reason to start dating them. Which is just one scene really at the end of the Arcana, an easter egg moment before the endgame, and two scenes in the endgame. And depending on when and who, also the Hawaii trip. The dating sim aspect in this to me just makes it feel like, I did these things for this girl, I am owed her love and affection, instead of something like, I spend a lot of time with this girl and I really like her and I want to try and take the next step. And if the response here is that's just kind of what dating sims are, basically, that speaks to a larger problem that isn't being addressed as much from where I'm standing. Also, the fact that the Arcanas don't have consequences at any point, even if you go down the harem route, just kind of adds to that feeling for me. Also, every girl you can start an Arcana with is romanceable and like, why can't they love someone else instead of Joker? Well, all except Sai. You can't fuck her! If this is more of the route Persona is going with six, I would honestly like to see the amount of Arcanas reduced to a lesser and more manageable number, and more time and energy spent to the ones you can rank up, as well as more fleshed out options with the romance routes and choices. Like an Arcana being started with two characters as a couple and seeing their relationship strengthen over time. Huh, kind of like another game in particular. As for some of the gameplay, well, I like the visual aspect of it all and the Ola attacks are beautiful. This stealth could be better. Like half the time I might be behind a table or a wall and a shell will just walk right the fuck past me. Not even when it's dark, just some places are just bright as hell. Also side note, I know not everybody will do this for various reasons and this is definitely on me. I I accept that this is my fuck up. But I found that if you get Ryuji's insta-kill perk in vanilla and do the reaper trick until you're way over leveled, you cannot ambush enemies into a battle anymore just because you're so overpowered. That sucked, because it just removed some of the gameplay and the game got boring. Like, I just wanted to do it for the hell of it and then that happened. Like, sneaking up behind opponents ready for a fight just doesn't work in that option. Which I will say, while the stealth could be better, the ambush animation was sick. Also, the combat after a certain point just becomes Pokemon with demons. I know that's more or less a lot of what turn-based RPGs kind of boil down to, but still. I don't hate it, it just gets a bit repetitive for me when you got enemy weaknesses memorized to a T. I guess it's more of a preference thing, but whatever. While I like the music fine, I'm gonna be honest, I personally like the covers for the P5 songs quite a bit more. Like, J Music's covers of A Woman and The Days When My Mother Was There are really solid bangers. Also, YouTube keeps copyright claiming life will change even when covers of the goddamn song are being used, and my disputes keep being rejected. That said, for the original, Limbs of Fate and Arc are really good songs. The music though can get pretty repetitive in the game, like the same 5-7 to seven tracks of honestly pretty good music with a heavy jazz influence keep getting put as the default track to go to. I don't know, maybe that's just me though. Maybe listening to the music on repeat over and over again wasn't a bright idea. Meanwhile, I'm over here listening to Iwatoda Idorn for the 900th time. <laughs> Fucking I love Persona 3 music. And lastly for the story, more I like the message it has to convey, I personally think... I don't know, a game about society that needs to be reformed due to the ongoing injustice could have been played more... serious. 
Like, you have some empathetic and sympathetic characters who are outcasts. We could have got more of that throughout instead of something serious than something comical or it basically becoming a slice of life series. I don't know, I just feel like a series that's a spin-off of another series that gets closer to the chest more with its games, they could do something more serious with newer Persona games and I think it'd personally be fine. Uh, I mean, but whatever, art is art after all. Also, side note, if the creators can stop pushing characters with interesting, complex stories on center stage for a specific part of the games, and then having them moving to being background characters so we can see them develop more and more and spend more time with them, I'd really appreciate that. Overall, the game is good. I like the message, just which it was a little more gutsy with its execution for a number of things. Also, Futaba's best girl, I will not be taking any questions, thank you. And then there's Persona 5 Royal, which... Honestly, yeah, I feel the same about Vanilla with this. Also, how I said about maxing Arcanas felt like the game was doing too much in relatively little time. I do not like how they doubled down on this by giving you three and set deadlines before the Shield Palace to max them out before the new story. Like, okay, they added a second conversation after the Arcana rake up to make it go somewhat faster, but still. I do like how they fixed the insta-kill ability in Royal to just running over to lower level shadows instead of it consistently being activated for ambushes. I heard some people hate it, but compared to my time playing vanilla, that's honestly a fucking improvement. Also, speaking of, the new Memento's music slaps. As for the royal exclusive characters, Kasumi Yoshizawa. I like her character and story, I really do. Too bad she's got a lackluster execution to it. Alright, Bumble Fox, it's time to move! That's fair. Also, Atlas, stop making canon love interests, especially when you have ones like this who outright confess after the base game story of past. Also, to any diehard fanatics of Kasumi saying she's canon, answer me this. Why is there the option to decline her confession and just be friends? Don't change the subject, don't ignore this, answer the fucking question. I'm actually sick of y'all who simp over her and will not shut the fuck up about her. Like her if you want, but stop shoving her or any other fictional girls you like in her place when they come along into everyone else's face. Also, I think she's just... two-dimensional until the third semester. Like, okay, she's polite, she's an athlete, she's passionate about gymnastics and has to fulfill expectations, she has a dead sister, um, she eats a lot. But if you get locked out of the news story, how much do you know about her now that you did when you were first getting to know her? Her kind of doesn't help much because it's kind of all the same. I didn't see her in a different light or know that much that was new when I got hers up to five. Kasumi lacks that until the new story, really. Like, okay, her feeling as an athlete to meet expectations. That's interesting, but... They never really actually do anything, or at least they don't really do much with it until her first awakening. Not even a look of disappointment when she's alone and her telling herself after each time she lost something like, I have to keep doing this for us. Like, I don't really feel like there's enough to go off of without the news story to make me think, oh, this character's interesting, I wonder what her story is like. We get bits and pieces, but... I don't feel like there was ever enough that made me go, I'd like to learn more about her. Like, in the grand scheme of things to me, she's basically just Makoto and Futaba stories combined together. Like, we saw Makoto and Futaba outside the fan thieves and more or less learning more about their characters as time went on in different ways. We saw their struggles alongside what they were labeled as, and that's what I feel was missing with her character. She doesn't really have a genuine struggle like the others, despite the fact that there's clearly potential here to really focus on that. It just feels to me like watching a movie and the creators going, you wanna see more on this character who's important to the story? Wait until the last third. Like, okay, but why can't we get something more to go off of so that the payoff in the last third would be all worth it? Like her dad or some more interactions between her and Maruki alone before the third semester? Real just makes Kasumi feel like a self-insert fan fiction to me instead of her own character for four-fifths of the actual game. Hell, gameplay-wise, her introduction is her saving the protagonist when she's surrounded. Especially considering that that part of the story, it kind of feels like it's pointless. Which it kind of is, honestly, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't create any new scenarios. It's just padding on filler until the story can continue. 
As for Maruki, he's definitely a good character. I like his story fine. But it feels a bit too... quick to me. Like, similar to Kasumi, we learn some things about him throughout the game, but we don't really focus too long on his actual story and the events that led up to where he found himself. I'd like to have seen that. More of an in-depth story on Maruki instead of the small glimpses we got. Because his story and character, again, are good, and I like what they do with him for the story and the message. It's just a shame we didn't get enough of it. At least that's what I feel. As for the story, I honestly think the message really helps expand on the original. To me, Persona 5 asked to change what society considered normal. Royal asked if you wanted to change what you considered normal. The focus on the characters' dreams, ambitions, regrets, so on and so forth were really interesting in the end. Every character going on to pursue their own dreams and passions in life? Try again where they once gave up? Fuck yeah, I'm all for it! Also, the Thieves' Den is a nice addition. And the new music. And Tycoon. And the Velvet Room challenges. And the hangout events with the twins and Lavenza. If you think I'm saying any more than what I just said right there, that's on you, not me. Also, Jose is the best cinnamon roll that drives. He is adorable and precious and I want to adopt him. When you said you were looking for flowers, did you mean that floating thing? That's right, pretty lady. <laughs> he called me pretty lady. No, Lady On. Eh, it's probably fine. I mean, he said he'd give us useful stuff and all. Wait, wait! Hang on a second! We still have no idea who this kid is! Don't go thanking us just yet, bud! Aw, are you tired, kitty? You seem grumpy. I am not a cat! And I'm not grumpy! Showtimes are also good. One criticism I do have of it is geared towards the fact that people use Joker and Kasumi's as a defense for them being a kid in a relationship. Which... If Showtimes did this, that means Makoto and Ryuji are canon, Makoto and Haru are canon, Ana and Yusuke are canon, Ana and Morgana are canon, Morgana and Haru are canon, Ryuji and Yusuke are canon, and Joker are catchy as well. Also, you're telling me that Joker and Kasumi are canon, but Futaba gets no Showtimes whatsoever? Not even one with Yusuke and Morgana? Or Joker? Just in all our attack and royal? Seriously, if you're still doing this, just stop. The game lets you romance all the other girls you have arcanas with, except for Sai. You can't fuck her! Just pick whoever you want, shut the fuck up, and let people enjoy the game how they want, for fuck's sake. Also, while the new abilities for Personas are interesting, some just flat out break the game or have no actual trade-off or negative side to them. Although I found that happening more with the late game DLC and new game plus Personas, so... It's here or there, honestly. Also, the additions to the bosses... Some I like, because they give some new content that expands or adds onto the original, like with Kamashita and Mishima and Chiho having to deal with Futaba's mother in arguments, Haru's cognitive self, the 1v1 with Shido, but others I just feel like instead of a better narrative focus to tie into the gameplay, the game goes, how can we annoy the fuck out of you today? Like how with Madarame, how it was already difficult fighting a boss with four individual parts with different weaknesses and strengths, now with Royal, you have several Madarame clones with elemental weaknesses. Or how Kuruma's boss fight basically softlocks you into an infinite boss wave to deal with if you don't beat them down in one turn. Cause it sure as hell didn't change until I restarted with DLC personas to cut the bullshit. Some of the other additions I like, the new location in the game hall with billiards and darts. The Jazz Nightclub, which has a new song you can hear being performed live in game. And also with the nightclub, they also help add to the gameplay experience when you're in palaces with improvements to teamwork, and even giving some characters new moves and increased stats. I also like what they did to Akechi's Arcana by making it available to rank up yourself instead of just leaving it to the story. Again, I like this, but it does feel to me like it's doubling down. There's already a fuck ton to do in this game, and the game does a better job of encouraging specific ways to play rather than others. That just Everything else just feels unnecessary when it gets pointed out. Not to mention, to do certain things in the game, you need to check off specific requirements to go through with it, like the social stats, getting a job, or talking to people. And again, I wouldn't have much of a problem with this if the game didn't put me on a timer to deal with this at my own pace. Or at least not pack so much in the game when you already have so much to begin with that can occupy someone who's playing well beyond the first playthrough. Overall, Royal has a number of improvements to the original, but personally, 
this was a lot more stressful for me to play than vanilla, all things considered. I don't know, I personally liked playing Tycoon more than dealing with the news story over and over again, or going back to the previous one, but that's just me. Sorry. No, you're fucking not, Akechi. I know you. You're not fucking sorry. You you enjoy that shit. On to the next this is where I have to start bidding high. I say, as for now, I shall pass. There we go! <laughs> Suck it, Akechi! Oh, and the, uh, the stamps are a thing. I mean, it's hit or miss. I, I don't think everybody will be all for doing this kind of thing, but that's more up to the player. Especially since it feels like one of the few additions in this game that doesn't have much of a deadline or anything. Which is why it didn't bother me as much as some of the other stuff. I actually did get to take my time with that. And finally, there's Persona 5 Scramble, the Phantom Strikers. Alright, let's get this out of the way. If you're not a completionist and or have hours of free time doing the same things over and over again, I doubt it'll be worth replaying, because you gotta jump through some hoops for that new game plus. I personally thought it was more of a one and done type deal. And done fucked up! And I'm fucked up! And I'm actually fucked up! With that out of the way, The Phantom Strikers, to me, is the best fucking continuation to the original story. Not just in combat, but story, characters, and gameplay as well. The story picks up some time after the events of the original story, and focuses on a new set of cases similar to palaces known as jails, and the Phantom Thieves have to rise up again to deal with monarchs, characters that are similar to palace rulers, but have traumatic events in their lives that more or less are rooted in their reasoning. I love how this game focuses more on our characters, and while the matter of it being less serious is honestly kind of amplified here, it is at least backed up by the fact that they're on vacation and traveling Japan, so... I think it's not as noticeable here, at least, especially with how the latter handles it. Also, Zenkiji and Sophia? Literally the best additions to the game. So, how I was talking about Kasumi and Royal felt like her character and story and concept had a lackluster execution to the game? Here, Zenkiji and Sophia are absolutely done better. We go from a cop who acts and plays it cool and is hip with the kids and a cutesy moe character in a phone to a father who's driven to protect his family and an AI capable of eventually thinking for herself, expressing herself, showing what she feels, and acting on her own. And the beautiful thing I love about it is we see those changes occur with time. The story is really interesting as well. Well, I kind of give the P5 palace rulers crap for being a bit too cartoonishly exaggerated, so to speak, with the monarchs. On top of their trauma, there's also that aspect to each of them that have more of a twisted reflection on the main cast of characters. That has them asking questions about their own future in regards to turning out like them, or striking some chord with them in some way. We get Ryuji saying fuck and Morgana on the exact same wavelength with them during the moment. Seriously, I fucking love this game. The combat also rocks. I didn't know I wanted Koei Tecmo's usual gameplay formula for a combat in Persona, but fucking hell, I love the shit out of it. I get people would probably prefer the turn-based strategy formula the games have been keeping in tradition with and adding on to in their own ways. Personally though, I'm all for hack and slash in my games. Persona 5 Scramble literally has you getting the power of God in anime on your side. And yeah, the social link aspect got replaced with bonds, which are conversations or side quests that tie into strengthening your friendships, and the life sim and dating sim aspects are removed with dungeon completion being able to be complete in like 2-3 to three days. But personally, I don't mind it. Yeah, it's different than the usual formula for these games, but I still love it regardless for its story, characters, and gameplay. Though I doubt we'll be getting another one of those personally, because this might have been a one-shot deal with Alice and Koei Tecmo. Only time will tell, I suppose. Overall, P5 Scramble when I played it was a hell of a time. Shame the New Game Plus isn't unlocked when you beat the story, but eh, not much I can do about that, I guess. I still love Persona fine, and 5 was pretty good for the most part. But my biggest issue with Persona, though, is the goddamn fanbase I ended up coming across, be it on social media, YouTube, or Discord. Hell, I just looked up Persona fanbase on YouTube, and it's not just me who's had problems with them. And you know, the response to this is just to ignore the fandom and don't interact with them, but uh... We're all aware that you can think twice about what you say on the internet, right? And that people on said internet don't have to act a specific way or say specific things, right? 
But because people can simply hide behind a screen, they say and act however they want and shut out what everyone else says just because they don't encourage that behavior. I've had to watch someone who's an avid fan of Persona, in Discord, tell one of my friends who's engaged and in a healthy relationship with their spouse that fictional characters from a Persona spinoff that act more like brother and sister in the grand scheme of things are relationship goals. While adamantly believing that people who trade banter between one another in a relationship is completely toxic. And like, I don't fuck with that, because I just don't think it's true, and also I'm not gonna lie. Fucked up to tell someone that the relationship between fictional characters in a game is an ideal one, when that someone you're telling that to is in a happy relationship. Like, honestly? Some of y'all just need to learn how to shut the fuck up. And I don't buy the we're just joking defense, because after a certain point, which is for me two to three years or so, I have to ask, when does the joke fucking stop? On my other channel, I used to play Tycoon Knight in Persona 5 Royal and posted funny clips to Discord just to share with my friends. I stopped playing because ultimately it got the attention of people who just actually send me up a fucking wall. And I get some of these people aren't even adults yet, and some of them are just avid fans of Persona and love it like it's a fucking religion. But I'm still gonna call y'all out on this, because it actually needs to stop. I don't think it's really that funny, and I guarantee you there are more people that just roll their eyes and find it annoying. I've checked with other fans who I interact with, and it's not just me who hates this. A lot of us do. Fucking- I, I'm not even asking you to go outside or touch grass. I'm asking to not be fucking insufferable. Like, just go watch or play something else, there's a fuck ton of other games and whatnot out there that are enjoyable to play. You want a dating sim that's got an RPG system and exploration? Go play Haven. You want an RPG that has a darker and complex story with interesting characters and existentialism? Go play Amori. You want a game like Persona? Go play Shin Megami Tensei. Just get interested in something else and don't be a cunt or gaslight people or project onto the real world. You're not funny or cool or enjoyable like the protagonist of an RPG when you do this. You're the annoying mascot character that people just want to stop being annoying for like Five minutes. Fuck, I just want to like shit without this happening, and yet this is what I get. A fucking childhood beaten down with a goddamn sledgehammer covered in ice and salt, and this is the annoying shit that I have to deal with now. I'm, I'm fucking done here. Fuck this. I'm going back to Nino Kuni. Goodbye, I guess.